Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Mahmoud Ekenel. Uh, I work for ICC Evaluation Service. And for this uh, project, my research partners were uh, Melissa Sanchez from ICCS and Ali Kazemian and Berak Khoshnevis from Countercrafting. I'll be talking slightly different aspect of 3D printing and my specialty is building codes. So I will be talking about building codes and 3D printing. Uh, today's outline, I'll briefly talk about 3D printing construction. I don't want to take too much time. We are running late. I want to introduce building codes uh, if you are not familiar and what happens if there is a material uh, that is not in the building code and it's an alternative material. So uh, the 3D printing, I'll go really fast. Uh, we are running out of a little bit uh, rate. Uh, the 3D printing uh, technology we considered for this research project or building code, code compliance research project was counter crafting because uh, requests came from counter crafting. And it was developed in University of Southern California by Dr. Koshnevis uh, in late uh, 1990s. Uh, and, uh, uh, and there has been significant number of examples of this uh, 3D printing technology in time, and many of them are summarized in L-Studio 2016. In early stages, uh, clay and mortar were the viable option, but uh, in this research, we focused on uh, concrete, uh, printing uh, pr concrete uh, walls with 3D printing construction technology. Uh, let me talk about building codes, which is uh, my real expertise. And right now in the United States, if you, are, if you are designing in the United States, you are very familiar with this building code. It's international building code, which is adopted by all 50 states, uh, Washington, D.C., and all U.S. territories. The latest edition is 2018. They are updated every other third year, so next one is 2021. And again, this is a little bit different than our European friends or other rest of the world because the rest of the world might have a national building code enforced by the government. In the United States, we have a model building code that, that can only be enforced if it is adopted by states or jurisdictions. But right now, IBC, International Building Code, has been adopted by all states in the United States. And they changed their name when they adopted, like it becomes California Building Code in California and it becomes Florida Building Code in Florida, but they are all based, for, uh, 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 all based uh, on IBC. And if you open uh, IBC Chapter 19 for concrete design and for new, con new construction with concrete, uh, the primary reference is obviously ACI 318 in 2014. And I want to mention the upcoming code, 2021 IBC, will refer to ACI 318 2019. So actually, nowadays, I'm, I'm working on ACI 2018 trying to become familiar because upcoming building codes will be working with ACI 2018 2019. But neither IBC nor uh, uh, ACI 2018, uh, they do not have any provisions or guidance when it comes to 3D printing or constructing with 3D printing. And if you are uh, anywhere in the United States, but especially where I am in California, uh, in, especially in Los Angeles, uh, if you want to construct anything and you want a permit, they will require that you comply with the building codes. That will be the major question before they give you a permit for any kind of construction. And and what happens if there is something that's not in the building code and it's an alternative like that, like 3D printing construction? And so that we get our power from IBC section 104.11, and it says any alternative material is acceptable if you show that you are equivalent to this building code objectives in terms of quality strength, effectiveness, fire resistance, durability, and safety. And in some small projects, in, in, in uh, not complicated projects, building departments can handle this issue internally. But for complicated projects like 3D printing, they require research reports, which is 104.11.1. And they require research reports to show these equivalency to building codes uh, from an approved source. Uh, I'm going to go really fast. I can answer questions. Uh, if you, you can email me, I'll give my email at the end. How do we determine this equivalency? To, to determine this equivalency and help building departments to give permits to the uh, uh, 3D print, printing construction technology, we developed AC 509, ICE acceptance criteria for 3D automated construction technology for 3D concrete walls. And approved in June 2019, that was the first draft. This is very basic draft that we developed, but it will go on time. And just to mention quickly, how do we de de develop acceptance criteria? Uh, they are developed through a public hearing, which happens three times a year, every February, June, and October. And this is a public hearing. It's a live broadcast to the whole world. You can uh, get the link from our website and watch it online, wherever you are in the world. Uh, so there are nine code officials. Uh, Right here, they are selected. Uh, they are highly experienced building the court officials or building officials from throughout the United States. They represent various parts of the United States, and then they listen public, 
And here I am with my uh, project partner, Melissa. Uh, we are presenting this criteria to the committee and then come to listen to the public and they, they response all the listen to our response to the written questions from the public and and then at the end they vote and majority must vote yes to get a criteria approved and it happens three times a year and this was last year October that we were able to meet in person nowadays we can meet in person for the obvious reasons and I will talk about acceptance criteria 509. What am I trying to do in X8? What are we trying to do in AC 509? We are trying to satisfy building code objectives. What are the building code objectives? Strength, effectiveness, durability, structural safety, fire resistance, quality. Building code requires that you show equivalency. And how do we determine? Right? So right now, scope of AC 509 is very limited. But in time, I, we've been listening amazing research coming out. Uh, we will we listen a couple of presentations today, and hopefully those research will help us to improve the scope. And hopefully in the future, all this effort will go in the building code, and 3D printing will be a part of the building code in the future. So right now, we are limited to interior and exterior 3D concrete walls uh, with or without structures to reinforcing uh, for bearing walls, non-bearing walls, shear walls. And we are limited to one story single unit residential dwellings at the moment because this is uh, the knowledge we have at the currently, but more research will come up and I'm sure we'll go to multi story. And then, uh, and we are right now limited to site design category A and B. And we just listened to ICON and they touched the, uh, you know, seismic performance briefly. Hopefully there will be more research coming out and we'll be uh, moving forward for high site design categories. And uh, what are the, some of the tests in AC 509? I'll go quickly. You know, there is a compressed strength testing and slump testing, and both of these are required to fingerprint the material because every manufacturer and 3D printing manufacturing organization might have their own proprietary mix. So we'll be fingerprinting those mix and to show that they are equivalent in terms of uh, in, to satisfy building code objectives. In terms of durability, satisfy the durability requirements of the building code criteria requires free task testing, shrinkage and volume change testing. And also we require, if there are fibers used, we require fibers to be evaluated. We have multiple criteria for fibers, like AC32 is uh, micro synthetic fibers, AC208 is steel fibers, 382 is macro synthetic fibers, and 470 is uh, twisted steel uh, micro rebars. One of the major issues we wanted to address in this building code compliance was uh, maximum and minimum extrusion time interval. We wanted to evaluate the effect of minimum and maximum concrete placement time interval on the bond between extrusion levels. So we kind of adopted ASDM E518, although it's for masonry, we came up with a test method to determine this flexural bond strength. And criteria requires that tested flexural bond strength at minimum and maximum extrusion time intervals to be statistically equivalent. This will help the code officials and building departments very extremely helpful during the job site construction if they know what those intervals are so they can uh, inspect properly. And one of the ob IBC objectives are, is uh, structural strength. And we talked to many structural engineers and there is no consensus about how to design the system. So we require a uh, wall comp compression test, wall flexural test, and wall infill static infill and shear test uh, to demonstrate that we, are, we have enough structural safety. And th these tests are required to justify the design procedure uh, proposed by the uh, 3D manufacturer or 3D, uh, 3D uh, construction company. And, and, and every research report will accompany or will, will, there will be a design criteria will be enclosed by every research report. And that design criteria will be justified by these structural test methods that we are requiring. So at least we'll bring some, we'll bring justification that the design procedures they are proposing uh, will have based, uh, valid scientific base, base, uh, base point. And some optional tests, you know, again, we are trying to justify IBC objectives, building code objectives, and one of them is, you know, fire resistance. And fire resistance is, is, is an issue if the wall is, is required to have, have, uh, fire, uh, fire resistance. And especially if there are fibers such as synthetic fibers, micro synthetic fibers or macro synthetic fibers. And also same thing for interior wall finish. If these three, three different walls will be used as an interior wall, and we require them to, uh, to be tested if they're going to be used as an interior wall finish. So we develop smoke, uh, uh, fire generated smoke developed in indices. And then we'll be publishing a research report based on these test results. Right now, scope is extremely limited. Uh, so especially maybe we need some more research on uh, size categories so we can go higher. 
let me remind you again the uh, building code objectives, uh, strengths, effectiveness, durability, structural safety, fire resistance, we already talked. The only thing I haven't talked about was the quality. What do we mean by quality? If we are getting building code compliance and approval or equivalency, we want to make sure that you keep that equivalency as long as you have that research report. In a sense that after you show the equivalency, we don't want anybody to lower their quality, get, produce lower quality mixtures, or keep changing their mixtures that we don't have any control. So the 3D, we require 3D automated construction technology to be uh, quality control inspected twice a year, and 3D concrete mix design to be quality control inspected once a year. So we have control over not only the construction tech, 3D construction technology, we also have control over 3D mixtures. So you go uh, in quality, in terms of quality, you go better, not you go down. Uh, so we can keep a control. Of course, the topic of special inspection, not, not many uh, engineers are, uh, they enjoy this topic, but uh, it's a part of building code. You have to address that building code. And, and you are doing a job site construction in the United States, especially like a state in California where we have, uh, you know, suffering from high seismic activities. Uh, special inspections are extremely important. And we require the same special inspections uh, required for the concrete construction. We require the same inspection for the 3D printing. In addition, we require 3D technology companies to provide uh, printed inspection procedures for the code officials or special inspectors to follow. And some of those are, if you in the criteria are summarized, they need to check compressed strength, flexural bond strength. We especially require that flexural bond strength tested at the job site, and they are within 10% of published values in the research report. And uh, I want to move to summary. You know, the predominant building code in the United States is international building code. But there is nothing about 3D printing construction. If you want to get permit from any building department in the United States, they will probably uh, refer to section 104.11, and they will ask you to show compliance with the building code. And we developed AC 509 to satisfy the building code requirements to justify that 3D printing construction is complied with the building code. And the uh, res resulting research reports issued will, be, will demonstrate code compliance. And they are primarily used by code officials, building officials, uh, special inspectors, and especially structural engineers, so they can uh, show compliance. Uh, I try to go really as fast as I can to save time. And thank you for your time. This is my email. And these are some of the references we used in the criteria.